So as the name indicates, the whole uh, genomic DNA is taken and shredded directly into small size pieces, pieces that are amenable to Sanger sequencing, which means pieces not more than around 1.8 KB in length, because from one end you can sequence on 900 bases in Sanger sequencing. So here you are, you fragment and make the library. This now represents your library of uh, genomic DNA here. Each of these fragments is ligated into a vector and transformed into a host cell. From this library, some fragments are sequenced at random. Once you get a sequence of individual fragments, you align them together to see which of these have unique overlaps at their ends. For example, the three prime end of read one here has a unique overlap with the five prime end of read two. So these now tell you the order of fragments here. So you know that this fragment follows the first read. Then if you come to the end of the second read now and look at the overlap again and you find that there is a unique overlap between the three prime end of read two with read three here. So you know that this is the next read in order. And then again you come to the three prime end of the read three and look for overlap which is unique at the five prime end of the remaining reads. And then again, if you find this one here, you can put the sequence together and finally uh, represent the overlaps only once getting you the final sequence. So these red ones are the regions of overlap which have been unique between two adjacent fragments. That allows you to place them in order together. So finally, you get the full sequence here. Right? So uh, if you look at the strategy of whole genome shotgun sequencing, uh, the entire genome is shredded into overlapping small pieces, 1.5 kb to 2 kb in length. All fragments are sequenced after cloning into appropriate vectors. Uh, reads are assembled based on the overlap data as is shown here. You are looking for unique overlaps at ends of reads. Uh, what is also important is that no prior information in terms of genetic map or physical map is required for this. And, uh, and this strategy works fine for uh, prokaryotic genomes which have less repeat content and are smaller in size. So let's see how the whole genome shotgun sequencing approach was used to sequence Haemophilus influenzae. This was the first free living organism to be completely sequenced. The genome size is around 1.8 megabases or 1830 kilobases. And this is a 1995 paper of which we're using as a case study to see how whole genome shotgun sequencing strategy was applied and how the library was screened to finally uh, bridge all the gaps and get the complete genome sequence. So I have already told you in whole genome shotgun sequencing, there is no prior information that is required. You are actually directly sequencing the entire DNA and based on the overlap data, you're trying to assemble the DNA. So you are actually trying to sequence the entire DNA in parts and then try and assemble the parts together in the order they appear in the genome. So here you are. Uh, first step, of course, is to create a genomic library and generate Sanger reads. So the genomic DNA was taken and sonicated and then size uh, separation was done on gel and a specific library fragment corresponding to 1.6 to 2 kb fragments were taken forward for the further analysis. So 1.6 to 2 kb fragments were picked up and ligated into plasmids, transformed into E. coli, and that results in formation of your genomic library. And then of course you can culture the library, sequence random clones, and generate Sanger reads or reads coming from the Sanger sequencing technology using a single primer. So if you remember, after you make the genomic library, you pick up the clones at random for sequencing. So in this case, 19,687 clones were sequenced at random. And what it generated was around 28,643 reads because some clones were sequenced from both ends and others were sequenced only from one end. So after the quality control for the sequences, what you found was there is 84% success. And if you put all the nucleotides in these reads together, it is approximately six times the length of the genome, right? So after the obtaining of Sanger reads, the reads were assembled. So based exclusively on the overlap data, some 140 contigs were inferred. And now you know if there are 140 contigs, the minimum number of internal gaps will be 139. Now the question was of these 139, how many are sequencing gaps and can be closed by sequencing the concerned fragment? versus how many of these were physical gaps where the fragment representing the part in the genome was not present in the library at all. So of the 139 internal gaps, 
99 gaps are sealed or finished after the laboratory screening. Uh, remaining 42 cases, uh, there were no positive results indicating that these are your physical gaps. So if you remember, a physical gap is a gap which occurs in the library because certain portions of the genome are not represented in the library. So to address the physical gap, the best way forward is to basically make a library in a different organism. And this time in the case of this paper, the new library was made in Lambda Farge. A second genomic library was prepared in, in Lambda Farge vector and the library was screened again to fill up the final gaps. And finally, you got the full sequence of Haemophilus influenzae. So the final sequence was published in 1995. So this is entitled Whole Genome Random Sequencing and Assembly of Haemophilus influenzae RD. The size of the genome that was sequenced was 1830137 base pairs or 1.8 megabases. This was the only complete genome sequence from a free living organism at that point of time. Right? And this was the reference uh, of the paper was published in Science in 1995, uh, July 28 issue, and then of course uh, the page numbers 496 to 512. And it also has a digital object identifier where you can go and identify the online version of the paper. 